Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Uh, this is a new series called The Daily XP. It's something I picked up from uh, years ago uh, when I was just doing an Instagram. Been off for a few years. Uh, after college, I joined the Army. So I'm still in, I'm currently studying. So uh, a lot of my time is taken up, but I wanted to get back into this. So <clears throat> uh, this uh, first episode is going to be a little bit unique. It's more going to be talking about internal social experiment I did uh, revolving around church. So um, I know that's an interesting topic for some and a not interesting topic for others. I think it, what bridges the gap here, it was about not going to church. Um, and so uh, I wanted to start off with just kind of like what started it all. <clears throat> There's a few things. Um, one thing that started it was I was traveling a lot. Another thing was that uh, I was angry at God. And with those two things, I had a curiosity that I stumbled upon uh, after first missing um, a, uh, a few Sundays in a row because of traveling on, on weekends. And, um, because of my anger, I had a desire to respond to my anger. So first off, uh, one of the things that I found was that it became increasingly easier not to go, right? Like the more you push something off, the easier it is to continue to make excuses for it, especially when anxiety builds around that thing, or the more time goes by, the more reasons you find not to do something. And I use reasons lightly. It's more often excuses, right? And this could be with anything. This could be with uh, working out. It's a normal one for a lot of people. This could be with uh, reading. This could be with... Uh, spending time away from the TV and more time outside, whatever it is, um, the more seldom you do something, uh, the, the more often that behavior increases, the more likely it is that you will continue to push that thing off, uh, procrastinate or push it off altogether um, because we naturally make excuses. The other thing I noticed is that my anger increased, like my general anger about anything, which I found really interesting. Uh, and I'll get more into that later. Um, another one was that my loneliness increased. I was more isolated. Now, I'm around people all day long. I'm going to school, currently studying a language, and I'm in class all day. I have physical fitness training and uh, we, you know, we're in front of our platoon and our company and I see people every day. However, even when I was like hanging out with somebody on the weekend, um, my loneliness was still there. And I think part of that too was that like, I didn't have like a normal community group that I could turn to. I think that's a big part of it, right? Like, you need to have a one, a positive community. And so I was missing that. Um, my sadness that I was experiencing about a few situations, they it sustained. That was the thing that remained constant through all this, was my sadness was sustained. Um, the reason I kept going, so like what I would say is what perpetuated this whole thing, was the increase in my anger. Now, I said I would expound on this. My anger increased, and I, I started asking myself why. And I realized that in um, the story of David in the Bible, um, it talks about how Paul is continuously uh, perplexed and angered and filled with rage. And the only time that he received peace from this was when David would come in and play his harp and it says that it would it would calm the rage within him so 
there was something inherent about being in the worshipful presence of God that that made that that decreased his anger that decreased his rage um i think that is something that we see today still right when you continuously are around people who are loving when you're continuously in situations uh where you are uplifted or you are surrounded by people who are uplifting you or others um, and particularly in a church where you're in a place where your collective hearts are oriented towards a higher setting, a higher purpose, something greater than yourself, um, that that's a weekly removal of you from normal life into an immersive place filled with only good things. I mean, ideally, I know every once in a while, maybe there's some drama or something. But um, on, say, like a Sunday morning, though, typically speaking, you're immersed not just in the presence of God, but with a group of believers, a positive community. And your soul is uplifted as you uplift worship to God. And whatever things have gone on that week they don't completely disappear forever it's not like your problems magically go away but you're recharged and you're reminded and your heart is reoriented towards the same purpose right and if you're not having that on a weekly basis another thing happens as paul said forsake not the assembling of yourselves lest you fall into temptation and one of the temptations is to give into your anger it's very easy temptation. We give into our anger. It's very natural, actually. It is the learned man. It is the practiced man. It is the man with self-control who subjugates his wrath because he knows that something mo- is more important than that. That's self-control. And it's not that anger doesn't exist, but it it doesn't control you, you control it. Uh, more importantly, you can gain peace because you submit to God and you're, you're filled with the peace because you've been in a place before the presence of God in order for Him to come into your heart. So you're no longer... You're no longer bound. So, <clears throat> my anger was increasing, though. Uh, and as I mentioned, it was finding excuses, more and more excuses not to go. And, you know, whether that was, oh, well, I parked really far away from the barracks today, or I'm really tired, or, oh, I was up really late studying last night, or, oh, I was out with friends, or whatever it was, there was plenty of reasons not to go. Excuses, actually. Plenty of excuses not to go. Uh, Or maybe it was something even as significant as, I have a test tomorrow and I really have to study. Regardless, taking that time, that necessary time out of your week, not just as you do every day with God, but once a week to meet with other believers. There's a beautiful thing that happens. Um, Sociologists call it collective effervescence, Uh, but I prefer simply to call it worship. It's an act of worship because one, you're, you're doing an act of obedience, and two, you're going there intentionally to be surrounded with other people who are like-minded, like-hearted for the same goal of learning from each other and from the pastor and coming together specifically to recharge and encourage one another. 
the body of Christ, as it's called, is meant to function as a single unit, and it cannot function as a single unit if it does not act as a single unit, and it cannot act as a single unit if its parts are not together, and you come together to agree on things, and you come together to work for your community in your community, and if you're not meeting weekly, it's going to be really difficult to do that. The other thing was my desire to hurt God because of the pain that I was suffering. I didn't necessarily blame him for doing anything wrong. I knew that would have been a lie. I didn't blame him for doing something. I was angry at him because I followed, I did what he asked and I didn't get the results that I was hoping for. Um, at least not right away, um, not yet. And I was hurting because of it. And so I still talk to him. I still daily, um, at, le at least several times a week, would tell him my feelings, why I was angry, and that I didn't understand. Uh, and the only way I could think to, as messed up as it sounds, to hurt him back was to intentionally disobey that word of going to church um, and being around other believers for my sake, for theirs, and for his. And I, I think it worked. However, uh, what was revealed to me was that God hurts every day. He hurts every single day by every act of disobedience. He hurts every day from every act of rebellion um, and from every act uh, of his children who wish to disavow themselves or who never knew him at all and want nothing to do with him. And me just adding to it wasn't, wasn't making a dent. It wasn't gonna, me, me disobeying him wasn't going to change his mind. Um, it was just me adding to everyone else. It was just me being like everyone else. And I was hurting more. It was hurting me more than it was hurting him. Uh, at least I think so. Um, if, 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 at least just as much, I, w I would say. Um, <clears throat> what resulted, though, is that I, I wanted to talk to him less. I found that in my anger, as it grew, I was like, well, yeah, I don't, I don't want to talk to you anyways. I don't want to be around you. I kind of want nothing to do with you because you told me what to do and I listened to you. And now what? I'm not seeing any of the results that I hoped for, the things that I prayed for, the things that I asked for. But you got you want. You got what you wanted. I, I listened to you. And it wasn't enough for me to know that I had peace with the decision that I made to be obedient. Um, you know, in all of all of this, it sucks. Um, thinking back to how uh, I was thinking, and if I'm being honest, like I'm, I'm still hurt and I'm still a bit angry. Um, but I realized that my anger was misplaced. When I did finally uh, talk to him, um, it it was, uh, you know, initially telling him how angry I was, but it was eventually turned into me just being like, I don't know what to do now. I was at a loss of direction, and part of the reason for that was I wasn't I was I was depressed and I was stuck in this 
cycle of isolation and i had i had to get out of it i just had to i just had to get out of it um and i i realized that i really like i really did have that the choice really was mine um because i i noticed that as my anger increased my external responses became more noticeable at least to myself and i figured that if my my external responses were becoming more noticeable to myself, they were probably evident to the, the, the people around me. Probably. Um, and I didn't like how that felt. Because uh, I was pulling away from relationships, like friendships, and um, pushing people away a bit. Uh, just kind of regressing into a very, <laughs> uh, lack of a better word, emo mentality um and it was tough because the lie that i was believing was that i could do this on my own that the things that i'm working toward don't require me to have community anyways that there's going to be times in my future career where i'll be isolated as it is so i might as well start now um but that uh that wasn't the case um and and what got me to want to return was noticing these differences in my life it it finally hit me of like all of these things that i've been pointing out they all at once like basically it just kind of kind of clicked and i was like man the person I was a few months ago is not the person that I am today. And the person that people are seeing in public is not the person that I feel like on the inside. And that was a wake up call. He's the last thing in this world I ever want to be as a hypocrite. Now, it doesn't mean that um, I wear, that I need to wear everything on my shoulder. But, um, but I was not, was not being myself and I was just kind of going through the motions and putting on a face and, um, seeing the differences in my heart and mind, noticing the differences in my attitude and actions, um, and, and above all recognizing why these differences were negative that's what led me back um realizing that i was doing more damage to myself and others around me um if if only subtly um than i was you know making a difference in what i wanted to do and so because of that i uh I went back. I just decided, I was like, I just need to get back. And, um, and I almost immediately noticed the change. I mean, as simple as that Sunday. Um, however, I was intrigued by exploring these I was intrigued by exploring these differences that I had noticed. And so my desire to return to church increased. My desire to have goals again increased. Because I was very... I was in a slump. Um, But I I began to struggle between my desire at this point to understand others in my situation and my understanding of humanity being dependent on community. So for a couple more weeks, um, I actually, it it wasn't for a couple more weeks that I did return to church. Um, More to uh, get intentionally at this point, 
use this time to for this so that I could understand what causes individuals who claim to love God. I use the word claim intentionally. I don't mean it disrespectfully. But those who claim to love God, who claim to be Christians, what prevents them from not just not going to church, but stopping as well. And while I didn't get an all-encompassing answer of stopping, because there there are several f- reasons for people, um, I guess I did get somewhat of a general answer. And it was that it's based in one of two things. Either one is a sense of pride of I can do it on my own and I don't need self or I don't need church for salvation. And two or or two, it's based it, it's rooted in pain. It's rooted in whether that pain came from a church or from a personal interaction with our creator. Um, it was one of those two things. Now the first one um, there's some truth to it, right? You don't, you do know going to church is not required for salvation. We know what's required for salvation. Um, what's required for salvation is the admission, uh, that you can't do it alone, that you cannot save yourself, that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father but by Him, and thereby the only way that all men may be saved is through Him, acknowledging that He was who He said He was, that He was the Christ, Son of the living God, that He was sent here to sacrifice Himself for our sins as an innocent so that we may have reconciliation with the Father accepting that and accepting him into your heart, into your life, uh, and making him Lord and Savior. That is what is required for salvation. But salvation is the beginning, not the end. Where we go from here uh, (laughs) is a choice I leave to you. Name that reference. Um, Now, where you go from there is your choice and going to church may not be required for salvation but it is a commandment nonetheless um, given to us by an elder of the church Uh, forsake not the assembling of yourselves lest you fall into temptation if for no other reason it's a good advice because it helps keep us on the same path with like-minded like-hearted and goal same goal airway individuals so that you may be going the not the same path but the same direction um, on your path um, in this life the second um, well the and the pride part though the pride is a is a part that I mean that's that's It's kind of a no-brainer, right? I mean, pride often leads to a lot of uh, low areas eventually because we pride ourselves, then we often get humbled by others or by the grace of God. But the the second was what I was experiencing. I was experiencing hurt, and I I believe I gained a lot of insight to uh, other people not wishing to go back, not wishing to be a part of that community for whatever reason. There's several thousand, hundred thousand, million maybe, reasons individually that are slightly different. Um, But I think they all take the same route. There was hurt. You don't want to associate yourself with that hurt, so you don't want to associate with those people. And it's a big gap. However, if we did that for everything in life, we would stay isolated for our entire lives. And I mean entire lives, as in like 
you would never leave your house because everyone at some point is going to disappoint you. Amazon will disappoint you. eBay will disappoint you. YouTube will disappoint you. Uh, Disney will disappoint you. <laughs> Currently is. Uh, so, but like, I found that the same people, that those those people who say like, oh, I don't want anything to do with those people who wronged me, those hypocrites in the church, are the same individuals who will be upset with Disney for all of their ridiculous stuff and then continue to watch Disney Plus and pay them whatever amount of month uh, it is now. So they don't have a problem paying $16 a month for entertainment to a company that is responsible for a lot of ridiculous confusion, but they have a problem sacrificing a weekly two hours f for God. So I don't believe, I think it's cop out. I don't believe that it's, I think it's disingenuous to say that, oh, I don't want to be a part of something with hypocrisy or the thing that hurt me. I think it's just an excuse because it's easier. And I made the same excuse. Remember, I'm coming from a place where I've, have, I've done this. So, um, the tipping point in returning. Um, I did not like the person that I had felt that I had become. Um, I mentioned a few different things. Uh, my anger was one of them. My sadness was another. Uh, my pride um, continuing to grow um, at the same time. My self-esteem was lowering. Let me say that again. My pride was growing, but my self-esteem was lowering. My desire to be part of a community of God's people again, though, was in serious need. And that was something I recognized because it was a positive thing that was in my life that was no longer in my life. And I noticed the difference from before to after. It's pretty evident. Uh, I recognized that I was not strong enough to do it alone. Just over the course of a couple months, I realized that. I'm not strong enough to do it alone. Now, that's not to say that there's certain places, certain times that one may be called to act alone, stand alone, sustain alone for a time by the grace of God leaning in Him. But that is an act of obedience to the Father, not an act of disobedience and rebellion against Him. That's why it's sustainable. Because when you act in accordance with his word, you have peace. I did not have peace when I was not going. And I think that stands true for most people. Noting that obedience is a greater priority than my feelings. And having that action honored by God in the same order, meaning that God will honor your obedience even if you don't understand why, or even if you maybe even be upset or bothered by it, but you still say, yeah, I don't like this, I don't want this, but I know that you know better. I trust you because you're all powerful. You're everywhere. You are love and you hold the past, present and future in your hands. You know, not only mine, but everyone else's and how they all work together. So why would I trust myself more than I trust you? If you're a logical person, it's the only conclusion that you could come to, at least as a Christian. If you're a logical person, then the only conclusion you can come to when noting 
all of those things about God is that we can trust Him and be obedient to Him over ourselves, even when we don't want to. <sighs> we can trust Him and be obedient to Him even when we don't want to. Seeing the need to set the example for others in my life to see was a big part of it as well. And noting that I couldn't do it alone made me realize that I need my weekly fellowship with fellow believers, not just for uh, my own encouragement, but so that I could see where I'm needed and be reminded that I'm needed wherever I'm at. Again, as, as a sheer act of obedience, doing what we're called as Christians, um, as our baseline, to live in accordance with His Word, both His literal Word and His written Word, um, so that His kingdom may be furthered and others may follow him <sighs> that was a big part of the tipping point um, and lastly was God reached out to me through others um, and he showed me that he loved me and you enough to reveal this to me. He didn't have to give me this revelation. He didn't have to show me the error of my ways, but he did because he loves me and he wants what's best for me. And he wants me to be a part of the kingdom that reaches the rest of the world, that like his team of ambassadors that go out and tell others the good news. So, uh, love you guys. Um, <laughs> and I hope all hearts and minds are clear until next time.